The first Shark Tank post-COVID. In a protected bubble environment to keep our entrepreneurs, sharks, and crew <laughs> as safe as possible from COVID-19. The world is a much different place now. Well, it's so funny that this is not that long ago, but it already feels so weirdly dated. My name's Carson Grill. And I'm Jason Grill. We're from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I am the proud dad to this CEO right here. I hate it when the parent has coached the kid word by word, and then they're like, they're prodding him. Oh, uh, it's so cringe. The kid is not a CEO, dude. The kid is not going to fire somebody. The question to you, Sharks, is does your paint closet look anything like this? Ooh. <laughs> This kid's getting beaten if he doesn't do this. <laughs> Listen, my dad's a vet too, dude. When, when my dad was still in the service, brings out the fucking belt, dude, if I wasn't getting good grades, which I didn't. <laughs> there has, has to, to be, be a better, better way. way. There has That's to be. That's why I invented the patented touch-up cup for paint, the most innovative solution to all of your paint storage problems. It even has a stainless steel blending sphere for easy mixing. Just shake in paint, baby. Is this just a fucking mixing cup like you use for protein shakes and things? <laughs> just a shaker cup, but they put paint in it? We're already in 4,000 locations. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo. Wait, right, they're in 4,000 locations? Is this useful? Let me learn more. I'm, I'm leaning in. So we're both running the business right now. We both have day jobs. I'm in school. I'm going to be a freshman <laughs> in high school. And my dad works in medical sales. That's not a day we job, a, little bro. Kind of like, we do have a strategic partnership in Nashville, Tennessee, that does all of our picking and packing, all of our EDI order entry. And they do... <laughs> this kid needs to just play some video games. Another Actually, and we are a smart shark would know... That investing in a 15-year-old one year before the Among Us boom, that's dangerous, dude. I mean, they couldn't know, but they should think. Yeah, there's a real chance this kid's going to get mixed up in all that, dude. He's going to be completely useless as a CEO. We are on track to do $400,000 in sales this year. That's wow, excellent. Good wow. you. Usually the father gives the pitch, and the son does a little demo, and then off they go because things are going to get tough in the tank. So far, Carson's doing all the talking. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> You know what? I have all faith in him. We run this business 50 50. He knows what he's doing. I've gone now I'm worried that the kid is actually 50 50, and that's worse. <laughs> if the dad is actually like intellectually equal with a 15 year old son, they're like actually splitting the responsibilities. That's scary. I don't, that's, well, that's probably illegal at something. He looks me dead in the eye and says, Oh, you brought your kid. He can sit in the hallway, I guess. And I said, oh, no. So that's when we pulled up a chair out of the hallway, and I led the meeting. No, he went out. He grabbed the chair. <laughs> nice. He pulled it in. So I'd like to do 200000 for 25%. I want Carson to drop out of school and become a CEO. I'm, I just finished eighth grade. I don't think that's an option right now. <laughs> Who will be running the business? Because I can't work on it every day. Blake can't work on it every day. Good Get this question. to a point right now is not right to No, quit. you're trying to keep the lights on in the house. I get it, right? Yeah, but at some time, when you're working at midnight, the buyers in retail, they're up Monday morning at 9 a.m. calling people saying, my shelves are empty, and if you're not there to pick up that phone at 9 a.m., they're calling your competitor. This guy's kind of choking it. $200,000, you can't fucking take some of that for yourself and just take the deal, bro. You think you're talking them out of it. I'm gonna have to revise my offer to 150,000 for 20%. Whenever the kid's talking, the fucking deals are flowing in. They're competing. The sharks are fucking outbidding each other. When the dad's talking, the money is getting vacuumed away. He's fulfill negotiating. Purchase orders, help us fulfill those purchase orders. On top of that, if it got uncontrollable to us. I don't know until I get in there and really understand your business better. Dude, I'm actually blown away. This dad is legitimately folding under pressure and the kid is actually stepping up. I was actually so wrong. This literally is the kid running the show. He's actually doing all the negotiating. <laughs> the dad seems like he doesn't get shit at all. Damon, same question to you as far as f uh, fulfilling purchase orders. No. <laughs> I don't want to be the bank. He wouldn't have said no if the kid asked, bro. But the dad just demands to be cucked. He's just fucking, he's getting owned. He's got a posture that says, I will lose this argument. Would you be willing to compromise and say 17 and a half percent? For 150,000, yes. Could you do it for the 200,000? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I it's trying. Could you do 200,000 for 20 percent? I love this kid. <laughs> I, I love that you're asking, but I really think the value that I'm going to bring, I need to own 25 percent equity. Damon, I would like to thank you for your offer. That was really kind of you, and I really appreciate it. But Blake, you have a deal. Okay. Great, thank you. Woo! Wow. Congratulations, right. thank you guys. guys so well much. done. That dad brought nothing to the table. <laughs>
Kid did a pretty good job, though. I feel like this is one of those Freaky Friday things where right before this pitch, they got their body switch and they just had to make it work. <laughs> per the founder, they're up to reach two million in sales in 2021. Sheesh. Next up is a solution to a common anxiety for electric vehicle owners. That their owner will buy a social media platform and then antagonize half the population, slowly but surely dropping the stock price. We're here today seeking a million dollars for a 6% stake in our company. They say a the million dollars for 6%? Soon. Range anxiety is the fear of running out of charge in your electric vehicle. That's Everyone's faces are so disgusted. You bro, you know they're in 2020. Wait till we get to the 2021 episodes, bro. Everyone's valuation is going to be like, I want 40 million for 2% of my fucking images of monkey <laughs> company. <laughs> the valuations are, you can already tell they're getting out of fucking hand in 2020. Units can be connected together to give the electric vehicle owner the exact amount of range they want. Number two, what? portable and anywhere, making <laughs> any location a charging station. They look and so course, disgusted. Factor, I don't know anything about this. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Bro, they haven't even finished answering the question, bro. Damon just fucking jumps the gun. Classic. That's my goat. AAA would carry this. AAA a customer okay. right now. We do have a program going on right now. The guy asked, are you connected with AAA? And he said, we do have a program out there right now. <laughs> it just seemed very vague. In the past six months alone, we've done close to over half a million in sales and we're on track to do over a million in sales this year alone. Okay. By the end of next year, we're predicting to do close to 10 million in sales. Is it something you could keep in your trunk? And then whenever you're like stranded, you could just take out the roadie and plug it in? Like that seems like it'd be kind of useful. You're basically leasing these things to people, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be better to simply sell this and then let the attrition occur in the market because I think that's a big issue. And I also think that you can have a direct to consumer yes. end of this yeah. down the yes. road where they can put in their cars yes. something. Yeah, I like what Lori's thinking. The only way I think it works though is direct to consumer. In my mind, like the big towing company, AAA, those companies can afford to shop in mass for low cost. So why the hell are they gonna fucking lease to own your fucking solution unless there's only one there's got to be a competitor so we are going to be coming out with a consumer product it's just smaller size lighter package what would that retail for depending on scale we might be able to get it for under 1500. 1500? Right i hate the lease part of the deal i hate owning risk you lost me there i'm out thank you well, kevin thank i appreciate you it you hate owning risk you hate it you hate owning risk if there's ever a place I could be that I'm not going to get in trouble, it's going to be at FTX. <laughs> Are you interested, Mark? Because yeah, I, mean, I like in. the concept. They've got Lori and Mark combo interested. Again, these pitches are like two hours long, right? We only see a little cut down. There could be something here. I'm personally, I'm just not seeing why they can't just get completely replaced by these bigger companies that have all the leverage. But just give us your number, right? And if we like it, we say yes. And if we don't, we say no. Ooh, shark, shark. How about we do a million dollars for 10%, it's split 50-50, but we'll also throw in 2% advisor equity and a board seat. 2% each. 2% uh, <laughs> each. We can 2% each. <laughs> so we would go. He didn't want to do that. Shark, baby. Do we have a deal? We got a deal. We have a deal. Jeez. They got a million bucks from Shark Tank, which is rare to get a million dollars out of the sharks. They usually are pretty stingy. They kept going. They still survived. And they raised more money in 21 and way more money in 22. They raised 23. They haven't made money yet. They're still money losing as far as I can tell. We're seeking $100,000 for 10% equity. For and meth. Joe here, he's Hi, just Joe. like all of us. The second Joe leaves his house, these nasty little germs are flying at him from all <laughs> different directions. There are products to wash and clean our hands on the go, but why not for our clothes, which are even... This feels like a lot of those scams, like... This is preying on everybody's fears around early COVID. <laughs> you got to literally wash all your groceries. Every single one. Garmagar is the first natural garment and fabric cleanser of its kind. You simply just spray it onto your clothes. Funny. I think the two options are this does nothing or this is probably actively bad for you. Will this take away smoke smell and not have to take the dry cleaning? Absolutely. Wow, it works. It I mean, works? the thing is, is there's no odor. Kills 99% of germs. We can't make those claims because we're not EPA registered yet. So we're selling it as a cleaner now, but we know how effective it is. Did you just follow up a bold statement that you make by saying that you can't legally make that claim? And it's always that 1%, you know? Viruses too then? Yes. COVID? 
Uh, <laughs> it's a big question. Yeah, we don't have that kill claim yet. I mean, that's clearly the, <laughs> the, the way that your cells are going to grow yeah. a ton. You're arguing this game, just tell me it fucking kills COVID. Don't get the vaccine, just spray Garmagard. If this said, kills COVID on your clothes, I think that would be a really good message. Well, well we're going to get it. What's 100%. the timeline to get that? Uh, six months to a year, I would say, if I had to estimate. But just to be clear, I looked it up. They don't have that badge still today. As of November 2022, there is no kills COVID badge. What I wanted was a little picture of the coronavirus with a big red X through it. That's why we need <laughs> that. I know, I know. Anyways, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. You may not need a partner. I think you guys can scale this to being a million, two million and doing it without a partner. So I'm out. <laughs> you know, um. What are you fucking talking about, bro? I hate that. It's so stupid. People would just love to take something fresh and non-chemical and spray it on their clothes right. afterwards. How is it non-chemical and it kills the germs? What is this miracle product? I'm sorry. I'm out. I think you have a great business here. I think you have great margins. Get this approval and whatever you need so that you can say this can kill COVID. You just need to keep grinding and you're going to look back and you're going to have millions more dollars in your pocket <laughs> because you didn't give up equity right now. Love you guys, but I'm out. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. They're still in business and have between 500,000 and 800,000 in revenue, but they were already at 476 in this show. So they really haven't grown much at all. Yeah, this company feels kind of dead in the water as I'm seeing it. I think they kind of missed their window. My name's Wiley and I'm here to tell you about my company, Rumpel. Blankets are the best, but it's been decades since anybody's thought to give them an upgrade. Rumpel has taken these proven new age materials and created a line of durable, weatherproof, lightweight blankets. I already like this guy's pitch. His voice is calm and comforting and his products look very nice. They repel pet hair, debris, and stains. Come on. <laughs> Don't waste wine. I'm seeking $600,000 for a 4% stake of this oh, booming of course blanket. You are. Oh, of course. Am I crazy or is the wine still there? Yeah, I was noticing the same thing. <laughs> the wine just like soaked right in. It was like, <laughs> I didn't see any benefit over a regular blanket on that wine, but maybe I'm crazy. I actually bought one in REI. Oh, yeah, right I'm on. a customer. You know the product. What do you think? Do you like it? I think the product's great. I don't really like the valuation right now, but we'll talk about <laughs> that more. <laughs> so this guy's already, wow, that's rare. That's actually the first time I've ever seen that. That's actually crazy. So that's a pretty good sign. 2014, we did 450K in sales, then 950, 2.7, 5.3, 8.8, wow. 6.5. Oh, ouch. And I'll explain that. And then this year we're on track for eight. This business seems good. They've done millions in sales. They've grown almost every year. They got a decent brand. The guy seems passionate. I mean, it's like right up to Tom's guy's alley. Just tap it in, bro. You do have to bring up how much money you're going to make off the eight million. Yeah. It's going to be about five, six percent this year. So four to four. Only five to yeah. six that's percent. The, that's pre -tax, low. Pre -tax? That's the profit. Because wow, that's really low. We've done two seed rounds. Both of those equaled about a million dollars. And then in 2018, we did a proper A round and we'd raised 3.8 million. Oh, this business sucks. Never mind. This has got low margin, no profitability, and they've already sold a bunch of it to different people. So you can't even get a big chunk. How much cash do you have in the bank? Three and a half million. Why are you here? I am here because I would like to take this product and this brand into sports licenses. Worst excuse ever. Do you Mark think he's Wiley. here for the exposure or do no. you think he Wiley. really wants us to invest? I'm not buying the whole, I can't get sports licensing help without you guys. So for those reasons, I'm out. We don't really <laughs> need the cash. What we need is a partner. And what I'm willing to talk about is a loan with a royalty. Oh shit. Did you say royalty? I said royalty. <laughs> This guy, this guy's seen a Shark Tank before. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful may be dreaming. He literally salivated. Nobody's ever actually offered Mr. Wonderful a loan with a royalty. It's like he went on Sesame Street and he's like, does anyone here want a cookie? Look at it, Cookie Monster. <laughs> Was I being nasty to you? I take it all no, back. No, it's all fair. <laughs> Hit me. What do you got? All right, so I would like to potentially structure this as a $600,000 loan, 10% interest paid back over two years, and then 5% of all revenue generated in the sports license channel. Damon, I think we should do this together. Blake and I will give you $600,000 at a 10%, that's a loan, and we get 4% equity. I'll give you the uh, $600,000. I'll take 4%. We're not gonna call it a loan. I'm just gonna say, give me 10 bucks a blanket till I get back $1.8 million and I keep the 4%. Bro, they're not gonna take that fucking deal, dude. You're so greedy. Bro, he offered Cookie Monster a cookie and he asked for the fucking cookie factory. $10 per sale till you get 1.8 million guaranteed and then you keep the equity? If he gives you that deal, he's fucking crazy. 
So the deal is $600,000 loan at 10%, 2.5% to me and to Damon for two years, and 10% equity. The deals keep on getting worse for you. I mean, that's, no, I, I, that's it. I like the Mr. Wonderful offer better. <laughs> I, I like the Mr. Wonderful offer better than that one as well. <laughs> uh, no one's gonna give you 10% equity in a multi-million dollar company for a loan. <laughs> They're giving you money that you have to pay back with interest and you just give them 10% of your company? What are you fucking talking about? These deals are terrible. Also, there's 10% interest. This is in 2020 when the interest rate was 0%. This is one of the worst fucking deals I've ever seen them offer, legitimately. I'm sorry, I can't do these deals. Just make an offer where they give you cash for equity. I, I really, really appreciate this experience though. Thank Good you luck. so much. Yeah. Good luck. All right. This is a fucking ad, bro. <laughs> For a rumple. They now make towels, mats, beds, pillowcases, along with blankets. It hasn't gotten that much bigger, though. I think he probably should have taken one of these deals. <laughs> uh, I think this thing needed some marketing help.